My name is Vincent Everts, and we're here at the Mariah Mitchell Association. I'm talking here with David Kaakman, Kaaknan, and you're the executive director. Well, how did you end up here in Nantucket? Well, hi, Vince. Um, yeah, well, I came here actually about 30 years ago. I was here as an intern with Mass Audubon, and I actually spent a lot of time here at Mariah Mitchell. And when I saw the opportunity come up to, uh, to come back, I was very excited about that and applied and got the job here about two and a half years ago. Two and a half years, almost 900 days. And we're here, this is the, the Grand uh, Central Office? Yes, it is. This is our Drake Hall, the administrative offices, and also we have dormitory space for our visiting interns. Okay. So you uh, came here uh, 30 years ago. Did you also go to the camps? Uh, what, what kind of programs did you do with Mariah Mitchell? I, I was actually mostly involved doing scientific research at the time, so... I worked a lot with the biological collections that are here, that are currently still here, actually. Yeah, yeah. And what did you do in the, in the meantime, before, so between that time and, uh, and that you came back? Well, I worked on a, on a few different projects. I had an environmental consulting firm and then worked for the Organic Trade Association for many years before I came here. Ah, that became quite big in America, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was an exciting time to be involved with organic uh, food production. Okay. Let's take a look at a couple of places of Mariah Mitchell. Correct. So where are we now? Ah, well, we're actually at the birthplace of, the, of Mariah Mitchell and where she grew up. She was born in 1818, right in the building over here. And it's a, it's a beautiful house that people actually can come and visit. And I'd say about 90% 90, 90 or so of the items that are in that house that you can see were actually owned by the Mitchell family. So it's a really cool and exciting place to go to. Yeah, and Mariah Mitchell, what was she known for? Well, she was America's first woman astronomer. And uh, she had discovered a comet, the Mitchell's Comet. And uh, she became very, very famous. As a matter of fact, people travel from all over to come and see her out on Nantucket Island. Uh, she was also an amazing mathematician, a curious naturalist. She took amazing notes. And um, um, she was a teacher. She was the first professor at Vassar College. And uh, she also worked up at, up at Harvard with her father. Yeah, she did a lot of things at the first time. Actually, I named my daughter after her. Mari my name, Mariah <laughs> is her name. And uh, because, I mean, she was the first professional astronomer. And what is here, this uh, Maria Mitchell Observatory? When was this built? Yeah, well, that was built in 1908, and it was actually built um, by her, her relatives, and they decided to raise money, and they did to build this observatory. It was actually a standalone, and then they eventually added to the building and connected it to the, um, to the Mitchell's house. So where are we now? Well, we're actually on the roof above where our astronomer works, and we're also right next to the dome that was built in 1908. Uh, we actually still do... Um, publishable grade research out of this dome astronomy research and um, and and this is I mean this is really the place where all the research has been going on for years and years and years at least in the astronomy area and where did Mariah Mitchell you know discover her own star her own com comet comet well she actually discovered her comet down at the Pacific National Bank building at the top of Main Street she had moved there with her family and they lived on the top floor and I guess uh, the story goes that she was there was some social event or some party going on and she she was bored with it so she went upstairs and actually observed a, observed a comet comet that had not been discovered previously. She had a uh, very clear mind. Eh? She was very determined. She was very determined. And I think she she uh, epitomizes what you want to be as a scientist. She worked very hard. She was very detailed oriented. She took terrific notes. And she was inspired by the work that she did. Okay. So this has been here since 1908. This has been 1908. And what's, what's over there? Uh, that's actually the astronomer's cottage. And that was built later on. And uh, that housed uh, the first two astronomers, uh, actually housed several of the astronomers that have worked here at Mariah Mitchell over the years. So what did you do in the last 900 days? Well, we've been very busy here at Mariah Mitchell. Um, I think what if you were here a few years ago and came back now, I think the big changes you would see, number one, we have a new roof on our main building here. This actually houses our Natural History Museum. It also houses all of our interns. We have over 27 interns that come here in the summertime. It's a huge crew, and we need to put them someplace. They're here, and they're at Drake, and we even rent another apartment to house them all. But they run all of our programs, and without them in the summertime, we'd be truly be in big trouble. They're, yeah, they're you've recovered, you've rebuilt, this, you, re you innovated, yeah. uh, renovated this whole yeah, building. Yes, we have a new roof, we painted all the trim, we cleaned up a lot on the inside, so we made some really nice improvements in that building. And we're preparing now to move all our science collections, which are in there, into another building. 
which we'll talk about a little later. Okay, and what happens in that uh, science museum? Well, that's what we run. A lot of our classes run through there, or we use that for our classes. It's a place for the general public to come and see turtles and snakes and other animals. Live animals. Oh, live animals, yes. And they're actually there. Let's around. see. Yeah. She seems to like you a lot. Yeah, she's really attracted, to, I think, to the warmth of my hand and probably would just sit here and, en and enjoy that all day long. It's really my The turtles uh, over there, the snakes, you've got enormous amount of interesting things. We had to fight to get in here because all the kids really were uh, very excited. And you have more of this, uh, you have more of these uh, places where live animals are? Yeah, absolutely. So this is where more, more of our freshwater creatures live, up here at, um, at the uh, Natural History Museum, the Hinchman House. Um, we also have the aquarium that down on Washington Street, and then we have really a full pretty much a full representation of all the fish and creatures you would find in Nantucket Harbor and the waters around Nantucket. Yeah. We've been trying to volunteer there, and every time we call, we want to volunteer to to basically feed the uh, to yeah, feed yeah, the yeah, fish, yeah. and it's always sold out. It's yeah, always very, it's always full. Yeah, it's very, very popular. And so what have you changed in this? Uh, what have you changed in here? So you've re re renovated the building. Yeah. What other things did well, you do? Just, just recently, we went through all the signage. We repainted these rooms. So they really look, uh, I think they look great now. It's really uh, a, an excellent representation of a more of an old school natural history museum, which I think makes it very exciting. So what do kids do here? Well, this is a great example of what uh, kids might do, especially maybe in the winter time or in the project in the summer. This was actually a mute swan that we found and we, um, we um, buried it and uh, we were able to extract the bones from it and they reconstructed it and created a beautiful Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, but I saw in the back you can do every physics test in the book can be done here. It's yeah, really uh, very exciting to yeah. spend a couple of hours here, but they can also do classes here, or they also are trained here. That's right. And Mariah Mitchell was all about learning by doing, and I think that's all of our programs are based on getting your hands into it, trying, experimenting, making mistakes, doing it again, and persevering. So I can bring back my own telescope? Absolutely, Vince. That's what we're really excited. We've really changed our gift shop around this year, both here and at the aquarium, really emphasizing uh, science, science-type gifts and uh, learning gifts. And that's been, uh, that's been a, a huge change for us this year. And we're excited that kids can then take the science that they're learning here at Mariah Mitchell and bring it home. So they're working hard on this building. What is it? They sure are. We're really excited about it. We're getting very close to completion. This was the uh, Mariah Mitchell Science Library. It was very, very popular for many, many years. And it closed down about 15 years ago. And we've just gone through. We've had the outside all painted, the roof redone. We've got, done a lot of work. We've done some structural work on the inside, new heating, cooling, air conditioning system. All of our collections. The whole works. Yeah. Yes, Bill. Yeah. And what, what, what will you do with it now? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we're, gonna, we're really excited because now we're going to have a great place for our scientific collections. We have almost 10,000 specimens, and they'll be all moved in downstairs, and they'll be in a great environment to last for many, many more years. We have almost 100 years of collections, and we'll also... Um, we're also excited because upstairs we'll actually have a science classroom and a good space for preparing specimens to put into our collection. Great place in the winter time to bring people in and classes. Yeah. So, science is still quite uh, yeah. quite alive here in uh, at. Uh, Mariah Mitchell. How are you paying for all this? How, how is Mariah Mitchell funded? I, I actually thought you were going to pay for it. <laughs> oh, we should have talked about that first, I guess, right? No, no. Well, really, from our members and our membership, we've had some wonderful support over the years from our supporters. And then we also, we raised money specifically for this project. So we got some really terrific foundations and organizations. So Dave, how are you paying for all this? I mean, uh, this all these buildings, all these programs, um, it's not so expensive all the problems, so how are you doing that? Uh, Vince, I thought you were going to take care of that for us. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, seriously, uh, it really could not have been done without our very loyal members and our supporters. We get the support of foundations, uh, and uh, that's been absolutely critical to get this work done and to get uh, really to take care of the buildings that we've been given to take care of over the years and to continue to produce these programs that people find so valuable. Fundraising is essential. Members and they basically give a certain amount of money. And you do certain projects like this uh, science library, which you saw, this whole building. That's right. 
Yeah, and it's really a community. You know, we got a support from the Nantucket Community Preservation Act, which was huge. They helped to take care of really the entire outside of the building. Uh, then we also get funding for a lot of our for astronomy research from the National Science Foundation. Um, and then we also conduct other research as well, biological research, and we get support from various organizations around the island. How hard is fundraising nowadays? Well, it's always hard because there's a lot of competition, always, and you just have to make sure that you're providing value for the people that are involved with your organization. And I think this is something that we that we do do. I hear people come back all the time and say, gosh, I, I was here. I believe even your wife came and, and, and went. My to wife has been here 50 years, and I mean, and now my kids have been going to camp for 10 years. I, I think there's a lot of loyalty of people where you take my kids, go to see them, they see the whole island, they see every aspect. And so I am very enthusiastic about the organization, yeah. and there must be hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of kids yeah. going through those camps. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. With about six or seven hundred, and then other programs where we have outreach, we probably have over a thousand kids every single, every single year that go through some of our programs. Yeah. And our goal is always to create an interest in science, create that spark that we're looking to, to find in every kid and get them enthusiastic about it. And that carries on for years and years, and people come back. Yeah, but you need money to make that happen. How are you turning that enthusiasm of all these parents who see their kids being excited or? people who have done here programs, how do you get them to, to contribute to the organization? Sure. Well, we have our annual fund campaign. We also have specialty campaigns. We just completed a match program to raise funds for the aquarium. It was very successful. And uh, I think, you know, I'm always heartened to see that people do do step up and, and support us. We can always use more. There's a lot of programs we'd like to do. And we always need help supporting the programs we have. It's never, it's, a, it's, it's something we do all the time. And we need to be mindful that uh, we can't offer these programs without the support and the funding behind it. Yeah. In Europe, it's a lot easier. You just go to the government. And they, if they think you have a great program, <laughs> they support you. <laughs> Here you really need to have all these individuals. So everybody's watching and has kids who are enthusiastic in the camps, who has enthusiastic, uh, you know, nice memories of it. You know, support this organization because it's really good. I mean, it's really wonderful, this whole campus, <laughs> this whole street and, uh, and what you're doing. So uh, good luck with that. Well, thank you, Vince. And 